Hi guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to our virtual lecture. Now this video would be the last part of our mini video series for the topic aggregate expenditures model. Okay, so now for this last um, video, uh, we're basically going to learn about equilibrium GDP versus full employment GDP. So what is the difference between equilibrium GDP and full employment GDP? Now you're all familiar with equilibrium GDP, right? Which is uh, the amount of goods and services being produced in the economy would be exactly equal with the amount of aggregate spending. So if they are at equilibrium, the amount would be equal to one another. How about full employment GDP? Now here, I've shared with you, um, you know, what we've learned already in the previous topic on unemployment. Now recall that the natural rate of unemployment is a situation where we have frictional unemployment and structural unemployment as well as seasonal. Okay, so we can only ignore the seasonal part since we're in Malaysia, there's only one season. Okay, so the thing is, um, at any particular point in time, okay, so ideally, when our economy is experiencing full employment, ideally, we would be having equilibrium GDP. However, sometimes, when we have equilibrium GDP, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are at the full employment level. See, because sometimes, although we are operating at equilibrium GDP, however, sometimes it may be the case where our equilibrium GDP might be less than full employment GDP or more than full employment GDP. And only on rare occasions, maybe, that our equilibrium GDP will be exactly equal to the full employment GDP. Okay, so in this particular subtopic, we're going to learn what happens when our equilibrium GDP is not equal to full employment GDP. So these two cases are uh, disequilibrium, you might say. So let's look at the two disequilibrium cases one by one. Now, when our equilibrium GDP is less than full employment GDP, what we have is a situation called a recessionary gap. Okay, so what is this recessionary gap? It's basically uh, a situation when equilibrium GDP is below full employment GDP. All right, so here I've uh, written the definition here for you. Okay, recessionary gap is the amount by which aggregate expenditures at the full employment GDP level falls short of those required to achieve the full employment GDP. Okay, so here I've written down something. Okay, there's basically a shortfall or a deficiency in spending. Okay, what it means is the economy is not spending enough. Okay, that is why the economy is being contracted. Okay, so there's a contraction happening in the economy. Therefore, we're having a recessionary gap. Now, let's look at the second case of disequilibrium. What happens when equilibrium GDP is more than full employment GDP? So, it's a situation called the inflationary gap. Okay, so an inflationary gap is when equilibrium GDP is above full employment GDP. Okay, so this is the definition. It's the amount by which an economy's aggregate expenditures at the full employment GDP exceed those just necessary to achieve the full employment GDP. Okay, so here, I've written a bit of note here. What happens is there's just too much spending happening in the economy. Okay, so remember in the topic um, four, we know that when there's excessive spending, what happens is there's a demand pool inflation happening, right? So this demand pool inflation is very much related to the, this inflationary gap. Okay, now let's analyze the two cases using the uh, aggregate expenditures model. So we're going to use the Keynesian cross here, okay? So, okay, let's first of all sketch the Keynesian cross. This would be our real GDP as usual and here would be our aggregate expenditure okay so this is our 45 okay hold on okay you're in the center now 45 degree line so um, say we start here okay let's say this is our initial condition C plus IG plus G plus XN so this is the case where we have uh, full employment okay full employment uh, aggregate expenditure. What that means is here, remember every time the aggregate expenditure intersects with the 45 degree line, okay, we would have an equilibrium GDP. Okay, so this is an equilibrium GDP, yes. Okay, the textbook puts it as 510. Now this amount, this is equilibrium real GDP. And at the same time, it is also 
full employment GDP. Okay, so this is the case where they are both equal. So it's like the ideal situation. Everyone in the economy that should be working is working. So we have full employment happening and at the same time, the, equilibrium, the economy is having equilibrium GDP. Good. All right. But what happens if, if our aggregate expenditure falls below that of the full employment level? So let's sketch one line. Make sure it's parallel. Okay. So this is C plus IG plus G plus XN. Okay, at this point, right, we need to look first. We have to make sure that we are looking at the full employment GDP, okay? So when the economy is ideal at the full employment level, by right, the equilibrium GDP should be 510. What that means is the amount of spending will also be 510, correct? Okay, but now we can see our aggregate expenditure is below that of the um, ideal full employment level. So here is our aggregate spending. So it would be somewhere below 510. So it could be any number. Lah. Okay, it could be anything here. Okay, so that is why this situation is called the recessionary gap. Okay, because our spending is below that what it should be. So this is a recessionary gap. Okay, so here if you look at this actual spending, okay, when it intersects with the 45 degree line, this is our equilibrium GDP. So again, as I mentioned to you, every time the ex aggregate expenditure line cuts the 45 degree line, we will get equilibrium GDP. But it may not necessarily be the full employment GDP. See? So here is an equilibrium GDP. But it is below that of what it should be. So here we can see we have a negative, right? We have a negative GDP gap. Okay, so I repeat, the difference here at this um, x-axis, okay, the difference here, this is called a negative GDP gap. Here is called the recessionary gap because we are spending much lesser than what we should be. Now let's take a look at the second situation. Again, pay attention at the full employment um, GDP part. Okay, But what if our aggregate spending is more than more than that of the full employment GDP. So let's say it's here. Okay, so again, this is C plus IG plus G plus XN. Okay, however, this is the case. Okay, this is our actual aggregate spending. But now, okay, remember, pay attention to the full employment GDP. Okay, at this point, by right, our spending is this amount, right? By right, our spending should be 510. Okay. However, at this point, our spending is actually much more. Okay, oh, It could be any number. So this is called the inflationary gap. right? So I do hope that when I'm sketching all of this, you go back and look at your notes with you. Okay, Hand in hand. So see, there's a difference. So this is what it means by our aggregate expenditure is more than that what it should be if, the, if we are at the full employment GDP level. Okay, so if you want to know what is the equilibrium GDP that happens, okay, this is our actual GD, uh, actual aggregate spending, right? So it cuts the 45 degree line here. So actually, this is our equilibrium GDP. So as you can see, it's much more than what it should be. So this is called a positive, okay, a positive GDP gap. Okay, let's do a recap. Okay, uh, I'm sorry it looks very chaotic here, but try to bear with me and just try to uh, focus at the lines that I'm pointing at, okay? Now, let's say this is our, okay, the one in the center here, okay? So, C plus IG plus G plus X, and this is our aggregate spending, okay? And coincidentally, this is also the aggregate spending at the full employment level of the economy, okay? So, when this aggregate spending cuts the 45 degree line, we will have not only... Uh, an equilibrium GDP, but we will have an equilibrium GDP which is also equal to the full employment GDP level, 510. Okay, so that's the ideal situation. However, if our actual aggregate spending is not here, what if our actual aggregate expenditure or aggregate spending is actually below that? Okay, so if our actual aggregate spending is down here, what we have this gap here is called the recessionary gap. It's called a recessionary gap because at this point, we are spending much lesser than we should be. Okay, by right, we should be spending 510 billion. 
okay but we are spending much less okay it could be anything that's why I put a question mark here okay so the corresponding effect would be we have a negative GDP gap so okay I repeat when we have a recessionary gap in that means when we have um, a much lesser spending than it should be we have a negative GDP gap in terms of output okay so that's the first situation now the second situation is what if our actual GDP is much higher than it should be okay so if our actual GDP is higher here so this gap here is called the inflationary gap why inflationary gap because we are spending much higher than we should be okay so when we have an inflationary gap the corresponding effect on the output is a positive GDP gap all right so how can we solve the problem how can we um, how can we ensure that both our equilibrium GDP equals the full employment GDP very simple when we have the recessionary gap what we need to do is we need to close this gap how we need to raise we need to increase the recessionary gap by this much Okay, and if we have inflationary gap, we need to close this gap. How? By reducing expenditure. So I repeat, when we have recessionary gap, we need to increase spending. When we have inflationary gap, we need to reduce spending. Okay, so when that happens, we'll achieve the equilibrium GDP that is also the same as the full employment GDP.